up on Cronkite News. As the weather heats up, so does the risk of wildfires. We'll explain how utility companies are working to keep power lines fire free. Plus, Brittany Griner has been in Russian detention for more than 100 days now. We'll update you on her situation and where her friends and family are hoping to go from here. And later on, break it down how people are using social media to become fake famous. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Ashley Stevens. And I'm Julio Mora Rodriguez. Thank you for joining us. There are a number of wildfires burning across the state. New wildfire restrictions were put in place late last week as tourists flocked to the high country. But we are not the only ones who are taking wildfire precautions. Cronkite News reporter Jessica Herrera explains what utility companies are doing to reduce the risk of fires this summer. Seasonal wildfire restrictions in Arizona are in place, and utility companies are finding new ways to keep our forests safe. It is becoming an, another tool in our toolbox for early notification. Floyd Hardin, the fire management officer with SRP, says they are working with Smoke D to create and test wildfire detection systems. You know, it's not putting fires out, but it, it is giving us the ability ultimately to have an early notification and also share that uh, with our partners. The smoke detector pilot project places cameras and smoke detectors on utility towers across the state. The technology provides an early warning system if wildfires occur near the utility's transmission line towers. It sends an alert. It works off of AI artificial intelligence, so it takes the image and it's processing it on the back end, and then it sends an alert to us via text and email, and so we would receive that. SRP will then share that alert with firefighters and land management teams close to the potential problems. And SRP isn't the only utility company who has wildfire safety on their mind. We work year round to mitigate the risk of wildfire. Wade Ward, fire mitigation specialist with APS, says they clear 10 feet in all directions of utility poles. This prevents wires from sparking fires and poles burning down. We clear the vegetation in and around our right of ways to make sure that um, it is um, for safety as well as reliability, of course. Uh, we don't want trees falling into the line and causing an outage. Wildfire preparedness is essential for all Arizonans. Keeping an eye on the forest near and far is one of the best ways to keep us all safe. In Mesa, Jessica Herrera, Cronkite News. SRP's pilot program is set to launch late this summer. APS works year-round keeping vegetation clear from equipment poles. Schools across Arizona may be getting quite the windfall soon, but there's a problem. They might not be able to do anything with it. According to the Arizona Republic, that windfall could be 800 to 900 million dollars a year. Now here's the problem. There's a constitutional limit on how much the educational system is able to spend. That limit is what nearly brought the school year to a halt in January. The hope is that lawmakers will resolve the issue this summer over budget talks. But up until now, according to Senate President Karen Fan, they have not had time to talk about it. Avondale and Goodyear are thinking the future of public transportation may be more micro than mass. A new Uber-like transportation service would allow people to book a ride through an app or by calling a dispatch service. One Goodyear council member sees this as a great alternative for cities where bus routes are unable to reach the sprawling city outskirts. Some experts believe that the solution isn't in micro transit programs, but better city planning that focuses on denser city centers instead of sprawl. The change comes as bus ridership and revenue have failed to return to normal since the start of the pandemic. Avondale and Goodyear will both keep their current Valley Metro bus routes and hope to have pilot programs up and running later this year. Boating and other water traffic has has been increasing with the rise in summer temperatures, but with increased traffic comes increased risk. Last weekend marked the sixth death in six weeks on Lake Pleasant. Maricopa County Sheriff's Office deputies say most of the deaths are preventable. They have since taken to social media begging lake goers to be safe. On Twitter, Deputy Rob Mass reminded people to not use tubes on the lake as it is not a life-saving device. Here in Arizona, children under 12 are required to wear life jackets, but officials suggest it to everyone. 
Saturday marked 100 days since Phoenix Mercury Center Brittany Griner was detained by Russian officials. Now her teammates and family are growing restless about the U.S. doing more to bring her home. Cronkite News reporter Ruby Aurora marks Griner's 100 day timeline. She was detained at a Moscow airport on February 17th. After months of silence for fear of hurting Griner's case, friends and family are starting to speak out. Brittany's wife, Sherelle, told Good Morning America on May 26th that she wants President Joe Biden to use this power to bring her home, saying, quote, there's one person that can go get her, and that's our president. Sherelle isn't the only one to call on the president. On Sunday, Phoenix Mercury head coach Vanessa Nygaard made her own plea to the Biden administration. You know, their sister is in a Russian jail, and we need the, the Biden administration to take it seriously. Uh, to help bring this this black woman home, and uh, we, you know we've we've seen them bring back um, a couple of uh, white men, and we want to see them bring BG home, and, and that needs to be an important emphasis for them, and uh, it's always in the minds of our players. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver has also sensed the urgency of Russia's prolonged detainment of Griner, and has been working closely with WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert. Silver said that they have, quote, been in touch with the White House, the State Department, hostage negotiators, every level of government, and also through private sectors as well. Our number one priority is and making sure that she gets out of Russia. According to multiple media outlets, the Biden administration is considering a prisoner exchange, but talks are in the early stages. There's a lot of these prisoner exchanges that go on all the time between countries all over the world. and. Um, you know, I, I think it's a dangerous situation when we're dealing with countries with hostile leaders um, that don't see uh, the worldview similar to us. Uh, I'm grateful that there's a discussion to bring to bring VG home. In the meantime, the Mercury are off to a terrible start to the season at two and six. They play the Chicago Sky tonight on the road. In the newsroom, Ruby Arora, Cronkite News. You could soon see more monarch butterflies, but experts say it's not nearly enough. A study done by the Center for Biological Diversity says butterfly population is up 35 percent, but the experts say that number is not even half of where it should be so they could avoid extinction. Monarchs have lost an estimated 165 million acres of habitat in recent decades, mostly due to development and herbicide spraying. The butterflies are currently waiting to be put on the endangered species list. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has until 2024 to propose them as threatened. Before we head to break, let's check in with our an weather anchor, Jessica. What's the weather look like today, Jessica? Do you think we'll hit 100 degrees this week? Hello, folks. Hopefully you're having a great Tuesday. Here, let's take a look at what is going on in our nation. We do see some light storm systems in our north part of our nation, but here in Phoenix and in our state, you see no clouds in sight. And what does that mean for us? Well, it does mean high temperatures, right? No surprise there. We do have uh, our friends in Tucson, 100 degrees, Casa Grande, 100 degrees as well. And in Phoenix, Arizona, we're enjoying that 101 degree temperature, right? Um, our friends uh, up in the high country, 76 degrees in Flagstaff, right? I'm a little bit jealous of that, I have to admit. We take a look here at our evening planner. We do see some sunny skies, uh, 95 and 94 sunny skies, right? And towards the evening, 8 to 10 p.m., we do have a chance for you maybe to walk that dog or go out for a nice jog because it is going to be clear skies and a slight decline in temperature. Now we are looking over here on a Friday. We do have some very light clouds and that's gonna be the same situation for Saturday and sunny as well. Light clouds, but of course, we still go back to those sunny skies and high temperatures for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So if you will be out by the pool, make sure you put on that sunscreen and stay in the shade. From the Cronkite News Weather Center, I'm Jessica Herrera. I'm Ruby Arora. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. Five Pac-12 teams competed for a spot in the Women's College World Series, including both Arizona schools. We'll tell you who's heading to OKC next. Your favorite member benefit is getting better 
and bigger. This is wonderful. Over the next year, Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. They give us all that they've got. From your favorite cooking and travel series. Even the stairs are breathtaking. To history specials and award-winning documentaries. Better and bigger. That really is the fun part. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app. Every day I wake up, my first thought is how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. So would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches that they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. And that's the way it is. Monday, September. Newscasting has changed a lot since the time of Walter Cronkite. That's why here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, you can learn the studio production skills of today in real time. Whether you want to work audio, direct, technical direct, design graphics, or you can even run the floor. It's all part of the Television Production and Graphics Lab here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. We're going on in three, two... Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries, all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Discover new favorites from PBS and locally produced shows from your station. Sign in and start streaming today. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Ruby Aurora, and this is your Cronkite Sports Report. The football world was shocked Monday morning by the news that Cardinals cornerback Jeff Gladney had a car accident. Gladney signed with the Cardinals this past March. The team issued a statement expressing sympathy to Gladney's family. College teammate Omega Stalworth says he'll remember Gladney as a fun-loving presence in the locker room. It's just a joke, man. It's funny. Uh, you know, a lot of those older guys on the team, he's on. You know, upperclassman while I was an underclassman. So a lot of those guys just you knew how to have a good time, how to make you laugh. Uh, didn't take themselves too seriously. The Women's College World Series kicks off in two days, and three Pac-12 teams will be in Oklahoma City in hopes of bringing home this year's title. Cronkite News reporter Madison Thomas was at the Super Regionals, where the powerhouses have advanced, and Arizona is putting on a super show. Arizona hasn't lost a game yet. They beat Mississippi State to advance to the Women's College World Series. They are the only unseeded team in the tournament to go undefeated and survive to the final eight. They finished their regular season with a losing conference record of 8-16, and 16, but pitcher Devin Nets said they got inspiration from one of their coaches heading into the tournament. And she said, you know, this is the best part of um, season. And I was like, what do you mean? We just had a losing season in Pac-12. Like, it was horrible. She said, no, everyone has a clean slate. And I think that was the best way to put it is that Everyone, every team, every player, every coach has a clean slate. Arizona State lost their series to Northwestern. Oregon State beat Stanford, advancing to their first Women's College World Series in 16 years. UCLA, the softball powerhouse, beat a young Duke program. While Duke was unable to win a game in this series, the two teams went toe-to-toe -to -toe for the majority of both games. This was met with excited fans that packed both sides of the stands. And I think uh, playing in like such a historically successful program like UCLA, you're almost expected to be in OKC every year, but obviously nothing's guaranteed. In Los Angeles, Madison Thomas, Cronkite News. Arizona State softball season came to a close Sunday night after losing to Northwestern in a best of three series. This is the end of the road for graduate seniors Bella Loomis and Jessica Puck, who helped propel ASU to a 43-11 and overall record. Puck, a transfer out from Ole Miss, and Loomis, the Chandler native who graduated from Hamilton, say goodbye to their softball careers. I love playing here. This team was so special. We love each other so much, and... You're going to go far next year and the years after that. I really feel like I've played my whole career here, and um, it's 
been one of the best years of my life. I played such a small part in this program, but it's played such a big part in my heart. The Pac-12 made the Valley its home for postseason baseball. Cronkite News reporter Ian Sachs was out at Scottsdale Stadium with what the inaugural Pac-12 baseball tournament means. The Pac-12 joined the other Power 5 conferences in hosting a postseason baseball tournament. The first ever Pac-12 tourney was held this weekend at Scottsdale Stadium, and the Valley was a strategic location for the conference. It's just a place that's got a rich baseball history. I mean, the Valley's known for Cactus League and great baseball, and, and so it's just a you know, place that's a destination and great with baseball. The conference planned on holding the first tourney in 2020, but COVID forced this start to be delayed two years. The double elimination tournament featured eight teams and 15 games, including a showdown between Arizona and Arizona State. This should have happened a long time ago. Um, I really, I mean, it's it just tournament games, games where it's like, you know, comp it's, it's a double elimination. It just breeds better competition. In addition to adding another chapter to the Territorial Cup rivalry, this tournament gave ASU the opportunity to extend its season by three games. This gave us an opportunity to come out and, and still have a chance to get into the postseason. ASU was knocked out by Arizona 8-6 on Friday. The Wildcats championship bid ended with a loss to top overall seed Stanford, who claimed the title with a 9-5 victory over Oregon State in the championship game Sunday night. In Scottsdale, Ian Sachs, Cronkite News. The Pac-12 landed five teams in the NCAA tournament. They are Stanford, Oregon State, Arizona, UCLA, and Oregon. The Diamondbacks hosted the defending World Series champion Braves on Monday, and the fireworks started early. Paven Smith with a no-doubt home run in the first to give the Snakes an early lead. Manager Tori Lovello got ejected in the fifth inning after pitcher Zach Gallen argued a call ball, but the D-backs pulled out the 6-2 victory. That's all for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Ashley. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. Uh, azpbs.org. Social media influencing is becoming an increasingly popular job. We break down how people are becoming fake famous on these apps next.